All right, what's the film look like? Uh, it looked good. Um, we haven't really started studying them yet, but uh, they said offensively they're a good football team. We're gonna get more in depth uh, this afternoon, watching film and uh, just preparing for the offense. And uh, you know, he brought the uh, the Wildcat offense with him, so they're a great team. We have, we have to be ready to play. I assume you reviewed your film with the Troy game. Oh well, it it was exciting. Um, first half didn't go as we wanted as we wanted to go, but we came together halftime, pulled together, and came out with a historic win. Talk about that Wildcat offense. What principles do you need to have as far as the defense in order to shut that down? Just basically play discipline and gap control. Everybody do their assignment. Uh, not do your own thing or just uh, do do your individual assignment. And if everybody does that, then you should be all right. Did the you guys having problems against the spread? It seemed like there were times when there was a lot of communication going on literally right before the snap. Well, they, they did a great job. Um, we come to the game, you know, we expected sometimes they'll do high tempo reps, but they had a, a great game plan. But we finally settled down in the second half and it came up and did well. What was the difference between the defense in the second half and the defense in the first half? Everybody just settling down. Uh, we haven't seen an offense like that all year. Uh, they got to the ball real fast and was just doing a lot of nickel and dime and little hitch routes, slants here and there, and just catching us off guard. But we uh, made some adjustments at halftime and we executed the adjustments at halftime and, and came out with a win. Were you more aggressive in the second half? Or were you jumping around? Um, no, basically we just went to new, another coverage, uh, cover two, and we uh, safety, safety help over the top and we took care of the flats, the flat route. Oh, it's a blessing, man. Um, I've had a, had a great four year career here. Um, just hopefully come out with a win. Um, it means a lot. So you played in front of your friends and family and your teammates. You had a lot. Of, you established a lot of relationships, good relationships that's going to carry on in the future. You gonna be a little emotional when they do the, uh, the walk out and everything? No, I said I wasn't gonna cry, but I probably cry like a little baby. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, you've, you've seen a lot in the stadium. Obviously, that game was this past game was pretty crazy. But to see that number of fans leave, it was like uh, being at Memorial Stadium, you know, and kind of seeing it half empty. What was that like? I mean, it's something that you really can't think about. Uh, you can't dictate what the fans do or if they want to stay or leave. Uh, the fans that did stay uh, got to see a great comeback. Okay, what are you going to miss most about playing in Tiger Stadium? Just Saturday nights and uh, just walking, running out that tunnel and uh, having the fans, the 92,000 people cheering for you. It's just a great feeling uh, playing in the big time football games that you dream of when you're little and watching on TV. Well, of course, this past game, you know, uh, coming back, um, I see the Florida game last year was a big, big game. Um, in there. Um, I mean, it's so, it's so many great memories that you know it's it's a lot, but it, it was a great, it's been a great feeling. Yeah, something like Quinn Johnson. Quinn Johnson, uh, hardest hitter that you ever face. <laughs> a great person, man. Uh, fun to be around. Uh, he's gonna play a long time, have a long career in the NFL, has really developed into one of the best fullbacks in the country. You're a guy that's kind of a quarterback on the defense. A lot of times we'll see you and you're doing this, and you know, like, is it frustrating to, to have to wait that long on the plays? Do you almost wish that you all would just set your defense and keep it? Well, sometimes, you know, it, it doesn't get frustrating. Uh, as, as a vocal leader, you can't, I can't get frustrated. Or the guys around me will get frustrated. So you try to do your best to keep everybody calm and keep everyone on the same page. What takes so long? Just the type of offenses they run. Um, a lot of times they have guys on offense running on and off the field, and they have one guy on the field, we have one person there, then all of a sudden they run somebody off the field, and um, we had to switch our play, and that's where sometimes uh, the, the communication errors uh, may come in. Do you feel that college football is almost becoming too specialized and just trying to play a chess game? I mean, it's it's coming to a, a, a new a new era uh, with the spread offense. A lot of teams are going to it, and it's it's effective. So I think it will probably continue to grow into that. Does that speak to the youth? especially in your secondary and on your defense? Because it seemed like you knew what was going on, but you were frustrated that a lot of the other guys didn't know it well enough. Is, there, is this trying to get guys to grow up and, and understand and know what they're supposed to be doing? Um, I think as far as guys growing up, uh, th this game, they, they matured a lot. Um, you got young quarterbacks like Patrick Peterson who stepped up and played uh, tremendous. It doesn't matter of time until that guy stepped on the scene. You know, Chris Hawkins is a veteran. He's been a junior. He's been playing well. And Phelan Jones stepped in this game and got the floor of the game to start playing well. So it's just a matter of guys communicating um, and getting better game in and game out. And I think second half really showed them they really grew up and, and played well. Talking about growing up, talking about your, your quarterback at the fourth quarter, from the defensive side, being able to sit there and watch it a little bit, almost like, man, what is this thing? 
What were you feeling? I mean, we're happy that he got hot. Uh, he got, got on, on a hot streak and scored how many points? Like 31 points or something in the fourth quarter? You know, that's, that's unbelievable. It's almost unheard of. So he did, he did a great job, and we're going to continue to rally behind him. Talk about playing a Houston nut coach team. Mm -hmm. I know it's not the same guys you brought in here last year, but you've got Ole Miss playing really well. Obviously, you guys know what Arkansas did to you last mm -hmm. year. Uh, Houston Nuggets is the type of coach he's going to have his players ready to play. Um, we're going to have to ready, ready to play. Uh, as, far, as long as I've been here, uh, when we play Arkansas, he has always had those guys fired up. And he's a great football coach, and he's going to come in with a great uh, game plan. We just have to be ready for that challenge. Does he, does he typically throw things at you that you aren't necessarily totally prepared for, that you haven't seen? It always seems like he has wrinkles. Uh, every now and then, but for the most part, he keeps it uh, pretty simple. Uh, when McFadden and, of course, Felix Jones there, you know, he didn't really <laughs> have to do too much. Uh, the guys are great running backs and, and great players. So, But what you see is what you get with Houston Nutt. It's just a matter of doing what you're supposed to do and man up. <coughs> when your braces coming off? <laughs> I got the top ones off. My bottom ones all come off in five weeks. <laughs> Ever since you've been here? You've been I know, man. My mouth hurt. <laughs> <laughs> is this a new sweatshirt? Yeah. Y'all like it?